Happy Mother's Day to all you moms. Happy Mother's Day. Jesus loves you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to you. Happy Mother's Day for you. Happy Mother's Day to you. Happy Mother's Day. Well, hey, Motion Church family, we're so glad that you guys are joining us this weekend. Happy Mother's Day. Yep, happy Mother's Day. We love having Motion at home available, but I mean, come on, can we be real? Who's ready for some child care at church? I know I am. Uh, but hey, it is Mother's Day. Make sure you show your, your mom some appreciation. I know I got to get my mom a gift still, and I definitely know these boys still do too. But hey, we're excited for worship. Would you join us today? Yeah. 
every wall We'll watch the giants fall For fear cannot survive when we praise you The God of bricks is on our side Forever lift you up With all creation cry God we praise you Lord For oh, you stand along Spoken 
Worshiping the Lord with you is so good and standing in prayer is so powerful. And we've seen so many prayer requests coming through and we wanna invite you on our website to submit any prayer requests you might have. And you know, when we do something new and something different, what happens is that things begin to hurt. And for me in this quarantine, I started something new. I started to run. I started running every single day and just a little bit, and now it's grown more and more. But you know what I've committed to is I've committed to running in prayer for my city and in prayer for my friends. But you know what's happening to my body? My back is killing me. My knees are aching, my muscles are sore. And when we begin to do something that's new and different, that things, they hurt for a minute until we find a new normal of health of what God is doing. And I just wanna encourage you that wherever you're at in this season of quarantine, that God has something new for you. He has something fresh to pour over your life. And He's calling you saying, what do you want? What do you want from me that's new? Because if you want something you've never had, you have to go to a level you've never gone. You have to do something you've never done. So I don't know about you, but I'm contending for the health of my city. I'm contending for the salvation of my friends. And I believe that if we do things we've never done, that we're gonna see things we've never seen. So come on, let's begin to lean in to the presence of God. Ask Him, what do you want from me that's new? And when you ask Him for something, believe, oh, believe today that He is able to do everything you ask, more than you ask, more than we could ever imagine. And so as we worship, I want to encourage you to lean in, ask for more, and be willing to do even more. So come on, let's worship together. Let's continue with our worship and in service together today. Hey, Motion family. As we continue our service and talk about tithes and offerings, I want to take a moment to remind you of one of my favorite names that describes God, and that is Jehovah Jireh. He is the Lord that sees and provides. That name, Jireh, means provider. I want to encourage and remind you this morning that God sees you, and He is meeting and providing every need for you. Uh, I think provision is something we're all thinking about right now. Provision for finances, provision for food, provision for health. But don't be discouraged. Be reminded that your Father sees you, He hears you, and He is providing for you. I'm reminded of my favorite verses, which is Ephesians 3.20, that says, to Him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we could ask, think, or imagine. And I want to encourage you as you give. Your giving is providing for Meals in Motion. Your giving is providing for needs of our church family. Your giving is providing this venue for us to reach people and share the gospel. So be encouraged, God sees you, He knows you, and He is providing for you at this very moment. Let's pray together. Father, we love you, we honor you, we give you the, our very best, and we thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh that sees and provides for every need in the name of Jesus, amen. Let's continue with our service. When things are at their worst, we can always count on moms to be at their best. While the world around us is hunkered down in fear, they're the ones on the front lines, making the new normal feel a little bit more normal. All in the hopes that years from now, when kids think back on this time, they won't think about the fear or the uncertainty. They'll tell stories about playing ball in the house and not getting in trouble, about epic birthday parades, social distancing dance-offs, and uninterrupted family dinners. 
they'll remember that while everyone was being homeschooled, they didn't just learn reading, writing, and arithmetic. They learned what really matters in life, love, laughter, and a good internet connection. And during this time when we're all told to stay apart, they'll find that somehow we've all grown a little bit closer. So that one day when this madness is all finally over, when this new normal goes back to normal, our children will one day tell stories about how in the spring of 2020, the world did not stop. It kept spinning and moving forward, fueled by the most powerful force on earth, a mother's love. Hey everybody at Motion Church watching here today. I'm so excited that you've invited us into your home. I just wanna say a very special Happy Mother's Day to everybody who's watching today, especially you gals. I know today is kind of a little bit different than how you've been celebrated in the past, but I just want you to know that here at Motion Church, we want you to feel special and valued. We have purchased across all of our anthems in our region, a special coffee drink just for you. You can go in and let them know that you are our uh, mother of Motion Church and they would love to give you free coffee. It's while supplies last. We've purchased about 1,600 drinks for you. So please make your way there and let them know that you're a mother of Motion Church. But also, I just want to speak life over you today and let you know that we want you to feel honored. We want you to feel special. I love what Song of Songs says in chapter four and verse seven. It tells us that you, are altogether beautiful, my darling. And I just want you to know that God sees you, He loves you, you're special, and you're doing a great job. And I just want you to know, hang in there. This is good, this too will surely pass, and we're gonna get to gather together again soon. Well, ladies, I also wanna make a special invitation just for you this Mother's Day weekend. We have our Darling Conference coming up in October. It's the 8th and the 9th. But on this Mother's Day, we have a very special price just for this weekend. We wanna have you go to our website, get registered and signed up. It's gonna be a great time, especially when we get to gather together. I cannot wait to see you all then. But would you put your hands together and would you welcome our senior pastor as he comes and as he brings a special Mother's Day message for each and every one of us. Happy Mother's Day weekend, Mothers of Motion. We applaud you, we love you, we adore you at the heart level. Thank you for your valuable contribution to making our world a better place. Uh, here at our church, we celebrate uh, this principle of surrogate motherhood. You see, we believe that you don't have to be a godly mom uh, to be significant to God. You can be a mom of any nature or status and still be significant to God. As a matter of fact, this surrogate principle of motherhood that we adopt we believe in a spouse. Even if you don't have a child by birth, you can still be a godly mom to someone precious and special before the Lord. So happy Mother's Day. We honor women all across the earth and especially within the contents of our motion family. Hey, aren't you excited about this, uh, this uh, coffee thing that we're doing at Anthem Coffee? We've got about 1,500, 1,600 cups of coffee, lattes, waiting for the Mothers of Motion to go redeem all across the Anthem locations uh, here in Pierce County. Uh, well, today I want to talk to you about maximizing the moment. This is part four of our series entitled Dealing with Reentry. And as I, I was thinking about how to honor women, how to best salute uh, this fairer sex, how to come alongside and champion you. I want to help you moms and ladies think through what it means to maximize your moments. And I thought, how appropriate wouldn't it be, would it be to go to John chapter two, the first miracle of Jesus, when there is a, get this, a gathering of people. Can you even imagine that? It's kind of hard right now in our COVID stat, status and state, but there was a gathering of people in the region of the Galilee, up, actually north of the Galilee in the region of Cana. And uh, there's a, a wedding going on. There's a, there's a party going on. We pick up the narrative in John chapter two. Uh, read along, won't you, with me? The next day, there was a wedding celebration in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. And Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the celebration. Come on, cool in the gang. The wine supply ran out during the festivities. Now in this culture, in this first century Hebrew culture, 
Uh, there is a lot of things that you're going to get a pass on if you have a foible or make a mistake. Uh, if there's some kind of party foul that goes awry, someone will look the other way. But the thing that's just not going to be looked the other way is if you happen to run out of wine. Now, uh, at this celebration, this is exactly what has happened. Now, look what Jesus' mother says. Uh, she told him, uh, they have no more wine. Now, this was a big deal to her, uh, but why was that so? Well, uh, the theologian Fulton J. Sheen speculates that the celebration, the wedding, was likely a marriage of the family member of Mary. And to have run out of wine would have brought in embarrassment and humiliation to the family. So much so they would have lost social standing within the community and it would have been the talk of the town for not just that week or month or year. It would have been a stain against that family name. So Jesus comes to her son who she knew who he was and says, uh, son, they've run out of wine. So what she's saying in essence is it's time for you to shine boy. <laughs> It's time for you to put that power to work because my family cannot be humiliated and embarrassed because of this oversight that has happened. Do you understand what's happening here? There is this conflict that's about to happen. They have no more wine. Look what Jesus says. Dear woman, that's not our problem. Now, when someone hears this, you might think, uh-oh, uh, mother just got shot down. <laughs> She got shut down by the sun. He said, my time has not yet come. Now, what is Jesus referring to? Jesus knew that there would be healing of the sick, raising of the dead, uh, healing of the lame, opening the sight to the blind, creating multiple baskets of food out of scarcity. He knew that miracles were going to be happening, but the time signature had not yet presented itself. And here they are at this social gathering with his mother, Mary, and her family relatives, probably a relative of hers getting married, her family name is on the line. And he says, listen, my time has not yet come. But his mother told the servants, don't you love that? I, I, I love that, that, that Jesus says, hey, my time hasn't yet come. But she goes to the servants and says, now you do whatever he tells you. And, and have you ever gotten that mama look, right? You get that... You get that mama look and you know, even if you're Jesus, the son of a living God, when mama give you that mama look, you's about to go do something anyway. Now look what Jesus did. Uh, standing nearby, there were six stone jars uh, of water used for a Jewish ceremonial washing. Each one could hold 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told his servants, now look, here we go. It's in action. Why? Why is this uh, thing put in motion? See what I did there? Why is this miracle about to occur? Because there was a woman. There was a woman that saw what she wanted to have happen for her family. And she got it locked into her heart. And now the wheels are beginning to turn. Jesus told the servants, fill the jars with water. And when the jars had been filled, he said, now dip some out and take it to the master of ceremonies. So the servants followed his instructions. When the master of ceremonies tasted the water that was now wine, not knowing where it had come from, though of course the servants knew, he called the bridegroom over. And here's what he says. A host always serves the best wine first. Then when everyone has had a lot to drink, he brings out the two buck chuck, <laughs> the bottle of ripple. He brings out the less expensive wine. Look what he says. But you have kept the best until now. This miraculous sign at Cana in Galilee was the first time Jesus revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. Can we pray together? Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the precious gift of your Holy Spirit. Great God, we know that you have miracles after miracles upon miracles to perform on the behalf of and toward your precious children. 
God, I pray for women all over the world within the sound of my voice, those watching on continents and states and countries beyond our local proximity in the 253. God, would you bless them today? Let there be a cascading waterfall of favor that would settle on the hearts of these precious women called your daughters in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I, I've, uh, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I have always been a big eater. Always. I mean, I, I, I sometimes will be eating with both hands. I'll catch myself like, Roger, just slow down. Use one hand at a time. But I've been known to be able to grub and shovel with both hands at the same time, eat, swallow, and chew without even blinking. I've always been a big eater. And I'll never forget one time when my wife and I, my new wife, my precious little bride, Tina, we were married a couple of months, got invited by our friends to come over for dinner. I said, oh, heck yeah, let's go. And I said, so what are we having? And they said, we're having chicken. Now, I love me some barbecue chicken. I love chicken. I like it in, in parts, in chunks, in nuggets, in soups, salads. I, lo I love chicken. And when we got to their house, I saw this table beautifully set. There was nice china. There was good silver. There was linen napkins, tablecloth. I mean, this place was set. And I'm like, man, we feel pretty special. And, and then Rita, my, my friend's wife, brings out this, this covering of this dish. I'm thinking, man, bring on the chicken, right? Bring on the chicken. Buck, buck. Well, she lifts the lid and I'm blinking and I'm double blinking and triple blinking because I can't believe what I'm seeing, right? Well, uh, what she more accurately could have said was, we're having drumettes. <laughs> and, and it wasn't like there's a big pile of like these, these chicken legs or chicken wings. There was enough for every person to get two. And so I took the tongs and I took my two chicken legs and I'm sitting there with this scarcity and, I, and then, uh, then the salad comes out pre-made, like four leaves of spinach with a little raspberry and some dribbly sauce on it. And then there was this little container of corn. And I'm thinking, is, is there a famine in the land? Is there, is there something wrong with, with, with what, uh, the food supplies coming to America? And we sat there, we gave thanks to the Lord. And I was expecting God to do one of those miracles, you know, turning uh, five loaves and two fishes into like enough for Roger. And, and I'm like, I'm eating, <laughs> I'm eating my chicken and I'm looking around thinking this is a joke. I'm waiting for the punchline. And, and that was it. There was no joke. That was the food. And I've never been more hungry after a meal than that one. And shortly after dinner was over and we set our pleasantries, we went straight to the Golden Archers. Uh, archers. We went straight to the Golden Arches and we had some uh, filler food, right? This is what it would have been like uh, for, for Mary and her family. Now, my friend Chris was mortified. He didn't know what was going on because Chris and I grew up together and we enjoyed a lot of food. And he was newly married and I was newly married to Tina. And, and Rita brings out this thing. He calls me up, right? He calls me up. He goes, bro, I'm so sorry. Do you know that experience scarred me for life? I'm the chronic guy that if we have four people come over to our house and we order pizza, I order five full pizzas because I, I want there to be leftover food. You see, Jesus wants there to be an abundance in your heart. Jesus wants there to be the very best for you. Jesus wants there to be a sense of more than enough because he is Jehovah Jireh, the great provider, which means he is the God of more than enough. Now, in these moments of, of coronavirus that we find ourselves in, there is something that God would want to communicate to you. I'm not just talking to women, I'm talking to men as well. But ladies, particularly you on this significant day that we honor you, would you just grab a hold of these things that God would be leaning into your soul from God's precious word? Because I want to teach you how to maximize the moments. Now, we've all heard the saying, right? Carpe diem. Carpe diem. It's a Latin term that means, you got it, seize the day. Seize the day. But may I just impart to you a Latin phrase? Carpe lumum. Carpe lumum. Which means, seize the moment. Seize the moment. 
Our life is a compilation of moments and we are the sum of our experiences. And so many of us live unfulfilled lives because there have been moments that we've had the opportunity to act or react in a positive, affirming way. And we've let those moments slip. We've let them go by and we've missed a window of moments. Well, that might have been the narrative of your yesterdays, but I believe that John's gospel chapter two is palpitating in the heart of its narrative, a powerful truth for you and I of what it means to maximize our moments, to maximize our moments. So I, I want to give you some helpful tools, helpful tools to help you to know how to do just that, how to maximize your moments. And here's the first thing I'm going to have you jot down when it comes to maximizing your moments. I, I believe what God would have us do is manuscript the moment. God would have us manuscript the moment. Now, what do I mean by that? I believe God would have you institute a brand new discipline in your life. And that is to begin to journal. I think that there's something very powerful when we, whether we do it electronically or whether we do it manually. God would want you to begin taking note of the blessings, the miracles, the audacious things that God has done, the hardships, the difficulties, the depths of your pain. Whatever the season you are in, if you would spend at the end of every day journaling the events of your life with God, manuscripting the moments, what that's going to cause you to do is to stop. Take an inventory. Be aware of what it is that God has done or what God will do when you reflect back on your manuscript. Now, I want to read to you from Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk is a prophet that's prophesying 600 years or so before the birth of Christ. And Habakkuk is a contemporary of Jeremiah, probably a couple years before and the Babylonians or Chaldeans are running over the nation of Israel. And God wants to speak to the people. But he doesn't want to speak this word. Listen to what he, uh, he says in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2. And then God answered, write this. Write what you see. Write it down in big block letters so that it can be read on the run. I love the way the message version writes that down because God wants you to write down the things of God in big, bold letters so that you can read it on the go, on the run, in, in, in motion. God wants you to be able to manuscript these moments. Can I just tell you something about Mary? I, I love in Luke chapter two, I, I believe it's verse 19, when all the, the birth of Jesus, the angels in the field and the wise men and, and uh, all the constellations, did this and that and the other. And all these things happen around the birth of Christ. And what does it say in Luke chapter two, verse 19? It says, and Mary pondered these things in her heart. Can I just speculate for you that when the writers of the gospel were taking notation, they were under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, no question. But I can promise you that without hesitation in my mind that there was some consulting of Jesus mother Mary and the things that she had pondered in her heart now did she manuscript did she keep a journal no one knows and I can't reach that far but I do know this that she pondered these, these things so that means that word ponder means to rehearse that there was a rehearsal of the things of God you see there are moments that God is giving us Jesus gave Mary a moment at the wedding of Canaan there was a moment for her either to seize or to let go. God would have you to begin this new discipline. And I want to challenge you, men, women, boys, girls. Begin a journal. Create this new discipline. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a Trekkie. I'm arguably a, a nerd Trekkie. And I, uh, no, uh, unapologetically, I used to love to watch the old Star Trek with Captain James T. Kirk of the Starship Enterprise. And, he, and it always started out like this. Captain's Log, Stardate, 9457.2. We're in the Romulan space zone. And, and he would go through this Captain's Log. Do you, but do you know that as long as there have been ancient mariners or sailors, there's always been a Captain's Log 
Why? To refer back to the events that happened in the course of a day. Because this would be used for posterity, for history, for in case of an accident, to, to make something noted. And I believe that Jesus, you know, we have this thing called a soap journal, a, doing our life journal. that we're, we're writing down scripture every day through our devotions. Do you know that you could just dimensionalize that aspect and let that thing be, be broadened by the manuscripting of what God is doing in your life? Especially in seasons like these, gals especially in times like today. If you begin to jot down what God, and you know what, you might, not, you might not even know what God has been doing or saying until you put pen to paper or fingers to keys. And God begins to open up his heart to you. As you ponder those things in your heart, you put them on paper. That's why we've always said the three most important words in the English language are, you got it, write it down. Not only do we, I think we should manuscript our moments to maximize the moment, but here's the next thing I think we should do. I think we need to make the most of the moment. We need to make the most of the moment. Man, th there are so many times in our life where we just wish our days away. Not just hours, not just moments. We just wish large chunks of time away. I mean, how many of you remember this, right? You're 13 years old. Remember 13? Some of you have blocked it out. It was too painful. Puberty was hard for some of y'all. But do you remember making the statement, I can't wait till I'm 16. Now, why would you make that statement? You be driving, right? You got your license and now you're mobile. And we would see all of our friends that were a little bit older than us. Man, I wish I could have my license. Because you remember that friend that you had that was like a year or two older than you? And they had their license and they turned 16. And what did you say? Man, I can't wait till I'm 16. But do you know what you did from 13 to 16? You just were biding your time. You were just waiting those days away. Missing something precious that God would speak. Not only in that month, not only in that week, not only in that day, not only in that hour, but in that moment. And when we have our eyes going down there, it doesn't stop until we say, man, I can't wait till I'm 18, right? You get to vote, you get adult freedom card. And then what do you say? Man, I can't wait till I'm 21, <laughs> obvious reasons. And then we say, man, I can't wait till I get married. All my problems will go away then. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then we say, oh, I can't wait till I have babies. And then we say, oh, I can't wait till I have grandbabies. Then all of a sudden you're, you're 55 years old and thinking, man, I wish I was 13. <laughs> You see, there's an insidious plot of the enemy to steal our moments, to, to, to vandalize those precious dots in between the hours, those precious moments when God would speak something. See, Mary had a moment. Mary had this moment where she could let it slide or she could glide, where she could just let it go or go for it. And don't you know that Mary made the most of that moment, especially when her son said, hey, it ain't my time. You and I, <laughs> mama, we both know that you were born of a virgin and we both know that what, what my my shtick is going to be, and my time isn't now. But Mary saw the moment. And you know what she did? She made the most of it. She made the most of that moment. In Ecclesiastes chapter five, Solomon, King David's son, writes this to us. He says, after looking at the way things are in this earth, here's what I've decided is the best way to live. <laughs> okay, this is King Solomon who was the wisest man other than Jesus to walk the earth, King Solomon. He says, take care of yourself and have a good time. The, is that biblical? <laughs> is that spiritual? Shouldn't we be looking like we're sucking on lemons and being sad about everything and being depressed and discouraged and defeated? And, uh, I'm a Christian. Uh -huh. No, he says, look, I you need to have a good time and make the most of whatever job you have for as long as God gives you life. And that's about it. That's the human lot. Look at verse 19. He says, yes, we should make the most of what God gives us, both the bounty 
and the capacity to enjoy it, accepting what is given and delighting in the work. It's God's gift. Dear ones, so many of us are just simply hunkering down. We're waiting out this Corona thing. We're just saying, well, man, eventually it's going to be over. And, you know, bless God, one day I can go back to normal. But until that time, I'm going to get in my bed, pull the covers over my head, forget about what God said, and one day I'll be dead. I don't know what else rhymes with that. God does not want you to waste this moment. This moment is to be the to be made the most of. Do you know that there are new disciplines like journaling you can begin. There are new skill sets. You can, you can download the Babel app and learn Spanish. I mean, there are things that you can do in this moment that you wouldn't have had the time otherwise. Dear one, God wants you to make the most of the moments of your life. They are gifts of God. Mary didn't wilt under an unfavorable response. Okay. I know you're God and all, and I know you're my son, but Mary didn't wilt. She rose. What are you doing? Are you wilting or are you rising? Are you wilting or are you rising? I would say to you prophetically by the power of the Holy Spirit of God, it's time for you to rise. It's time for you to mount up on wings like eagles, to run and not be weary, walk and not faint, according to Isaiah chapter 40. You see, God wants you to be the best version of you, but it's going to depend upon us, upon you and I, making the most of our moments. God wants us to manuscript our moment. God wants us to make the most of our moment. And you know what else God wants to do? God wants us to be that person that will motivate the moment. Motivate the moment. Now, what do I mean by motivate the moment? Well, it's one thing that when the moment presents itself to you to make the most of that, like, oh my gosh, that moment is here. But you know that there are many, many moments that never get to see the light of day because there's not been a catalyst. There's not been someone uh, that, that would be willing to take the initiative right? God wants us to be motivators of moments. Now, James chapter two, verse 26 says this, just as the body without breath is dead, just as the body is dead without breath, so also is our faith dead, what? Without good works. Now, I don't want to be Um, an Armenianist that tells you that your salvation is connected to doing works. For by grace are we saved through faith. It is a gift of God so no one else can boast by their works. Ephesians 2.8. But can I just tell you this, dear one? God has created you for things to do. And not just facilitate the things that are already going, But God has called you as a person of faith to be a person that will get things going. Look what Mary did. You know what Mary did? Here's what Mary did at Cana. She got the ball rolling. If she had allowed herself to be shut down by this statement like, hey, it's not my time. I know that, uh, mom, I love you. You're my mama. And I'd do anything for my mama. But I know my script set by my father. And my script uh, doesn't say turn water into wine. It doesn't say that. But do you know what Mary did? Mary motivated the moment. A moment did not present itself to her to respond to. Do you know what she was? She was a catalyst of the moment. Now, what, okay, here's a little bit of science for us. Let's throw some science into the Mother's Day weekend. Uh, What temperature does water boil? We all know that, right? 212 degrees? (laughs) Uh, Okay, how about Celsius? How about Celsius? It feels like a Jeopardy question, right? Uh, What is 100 degrees Celsius? And so if you're going to convert that, you know, let's just say something is, let's say it's 20 degrees Celsius. You want to know how much, uh, what the degrees Fahrenheit is. Well, what you do is you times it times nine, divide it by five, and then uh, you add 32. And so you'll know that 20 degrees uh, Celsius is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. I hope my math is good. There's a catalyst that comes 
when things begin to boil. And you know what we are? We are the heat that gets that water to the boiling point. But if we're doing this, if we're just sitting on our hands and watching the parade of life go by, do you know what we're doing? We're underachieving. We are underachieving God's glorious divine design for our life. And God has called us by the power of his Holy Spirit to be a catalyst of the moment. Faith, your faith without good works, James says, is dead. There's no life without the good works. Mary got the ball rolling. And there are events that may never happen unless someone is the catalyst unless someone is the spark. At that great miracle in Cana, Mary became the catalyst. Mary became the spark. Listen to me, ladies. What is the spark that Jesus is speaking to you? What is the catalyst he's causing you to become? What is that thing that is not even visible to anyone in your purview? But if you, as a godly daughter of the Most High God, would rise up and create the stimulation of that water in the pan that doesn't just sit there, but literally begins to move because, Mama, you turned up the heat. You see, I'm not going to wish my moments away. I'm not going to wish my days away. Not. Even the bad ones, I'm living in the moment. Do you know why? Because Romans tells, the book of Romans tells us in Romans 8, 28, that God works all things together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purposes for them. And here's what I know. In tragedy, there are things that God wants to do through us, for us, and to us. Even in heartbreak, even in difficulty, God works as the ultimate recycler and takes that pathos and pain. He deepens our soul. He widens our gaze. He gives us a height and a depth and a width and a breadth that wouldn't come if we were just blessed all the time. You see, it's both the pleasure and the pain that gives us our dimensionality. What are you doing with your moments? Are you like Mary and maximizing those moments? Are you motivating those moments? Are you manuscripting those moments? Because there is something powerful in this scripture today that God would be speaking to you, specifically to you. As a matter of fact, what I want you to see in your mind's eye is this blank across your chest. And I want you to see your name written on it. Marion, Cassandra, Louise, Kathy, Shaniqua, Alicia, Sally, Carol, Jane, Mary, Linda, Tina, Lisa, Adrian, Brittany, Ashley. There's something that God wants to speak over your life. And that something is powerfully connected moments that we would make, the moments that we would maximize. Don't hunker down and waste your days away. Don't wait your days out until. Live in the now. Live in the moment. Make the most of your moments. Journal them down. Share them with others. Read them out loud to yourself. Remind yourself of the goodness of your God. I believe what we're going to find if we will go that route is a life of levity, laughter, and love. Happy Mother's Day weekend. Your best version of you is on the other side of this amen. I want to invite you, if you would, to bow your head and close your eyes before Jesus. Father in heaven, I speak a blessing over every single woman within the sound of my voice that there would be some kind of stamp that you would place on her heart validating her, giving her validity as a daughter of the Most High God. 
And now, God, I speak over every man within the sound of my voice, irrespective of his age, from seven to 77, beyond, in between, and before. God, would you bless every male and let there be a sense of understanding of just how to honor and love these precious gifts that you've given to us on our planet. Jesus, I speak life where death would try to take it. I speak hope where despair would try to settle in. And just like Mary at the wedding of Cana, don't let there be a circumstance that would be daunting beyond the scope of her believability that Jesus can perform the miracle. And I speak blessing now on every single person on this glorious Mother's Day. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, this is week 10. Looking how it looks, I promise you this is going to end. I promise you there's going to be a turn. I promise you God is seated in my heart and giving me assurances. And he's given me an idea of how we're to proceed forward. I'm super excited about formulating that idea, sharing it with you in the near future. Know this in the meantime, we're not gonna wait till then. We're gonna live in the now. And I bless you in Jesus' name. Have a great and make it a great day. God bless you. Shalom. Well, hey, Motion Church family. We're so glad that you guys Join with us this weekend. If you're a mother, make sure you check out our anthem and get a free coffee on Motion Church. That's right, we loved having you with us today. If you missed anything, or maybe you need any more information, go to our church website or download our church app. But hey, we loved having you today. Join us next week. Should we just try? Can you watch me start? Can you watch me start? Oh my gosh. I'm sweating. Relax, <laughs> help us. Who else is ready to go back to church? That's right, it's motion at home. I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah. This is great. This weekend at Motion Church. <laughs> he drooled on me at the start of that. I don't know if you saw that. And I'm so sorry. Okay. I'm over this. Be better to your moms. James, can you say, I love you, mommy? <laughs>